Hey everybody and welcome to this tiny little cramped bathroom. I think I did a pretty shit job with my makeup today but this video is about hair so I feel like it doesn't really matter. Quite a few months ago I decided to get a wee bit experimental with hair and I really wanted to try creating a version at least of 1910 sort of 1900s like Edwardian style hair. The sort of pompadour was very much in. If you look at pretty much any photograph of a woman from that period she will have her hair probably in something like this. I don't know if you can see the back in the mirror there. Do, 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 do. It's not particularly sophisticated, it's not that hard to do. I wanted to find something that was in between doing absolutely nothing with my hair, like just blah laziness, and like fully styling it up all big and fancy. So this to me is a kind of good halfway point. It's very easy to decorate. The shape of it in general you might think is a wee bit weird, but it's supposed to be like a cottage loaf. You know what I mean? Like this this shape of bread, this old-fashioned shape of bread. So it's like a cottage loaf hairstyle. I don't know if it particularly suits me and I have not done the best version of it today. I haven't practiced for quite a while because of all this lockdown bullshit. I haven't been able to get any more hair clips or the proper non-shiny hairspray. It's not as good as I would like it to be but I did just want to show you how it's done just because so many of you asked. I have a lot of historical hairstyles I really want to try out, especially some really ambitious difficult ones. Uh, we'll get there eventually. The idea behind this look is that it's supposed to be voluminous but soft. Big and plump and a little bit fly away, lots of soft feminine curls. It's very easily adorned. It would look really great with like some big flowers in it or a wee bit of feathers or if you can get the right kind of hat for example it can support a hat. It doesn't freaking move either by the way. It's pretty solid. It doesn't move. It's staying there. So I will show you how I've been creating my early 1900s hair. Let us begin. Very small in this bathroom. I'm currently leaning awkwardly on the basin uh, so I'll do my best to get angles where you can actually see what I'm doing. I finally got around to colouring my hair even though I didn't have enough dye to do the whole lot whatever it's better than it was. Bear in mind I'm not very good at doing hair so if I can do this you can probably do it too. I watched a whole bunch of YouTube videos and we looked at a whole lot of pictures and things to figure out this hair, how this hairstyle was done. So this is kind of my version of it I suppose. So hopefully you can get some inspiration or whatever. First part's a wee bit awkward. I straightened the front of my hair because my hair's very very wavy so I thought it would be a wee bit easier that way. What you really want is one of those combs that's got like a stick on the end you know for like separating hair. I do have one but I have absolutely no idea where it's gone. First thing. Also I will say that this will be a lot easier if you have long hair like kind of my, my length or longer or, and or thick hair. If you have quite short hair you might want to look into getting some hair extensions like one of those clip-on buns or something like that. Or any of those wide pieces of clip-in hair. This look is about volume. The idea is it's supposed to be kind of large but soft, you know? It's meant to be kind of voluminous but delicate and ladylike. So first we're going to separate the hair from about halfway down at the head. So sort of just about behind your ear is where you want it to be separated from. I'm so sorry if it's like hard to see what I'm doing at any point, it's just so small in this room. Like there's a wall, there's a wall. I've been really wanting to try more kind of historical hairstyles. I've been wanting to do that for quite a long time, I've just never really gotten around to it. This is the only one I've had a go at so far. Separated. Making sure I can't see suddenly. Cool. Grab it. Once the front half and the back half are separated, I'm going to tie it up with a hair tie to get it out of the way. Cool. Please excuse the bits of my hair that I did not have enough hair dye for. Next, I'm going to take the back section of hair and with another hair tie, tie it into a fairly high bun. So like quite close to the top of the divide there. I realised I do need the stick type thing, so I've got this pointy makeup brush here. Uh, you can use whatever you have. For fiddly hairstyles I usually grab a hand mirror or something to see the back of my head. Very useful. So as you can see this is quite tight but also a little bit messy and what I'm going to do is messy it up a bit more. Just going to pull, pull bits of it 
and kind of <laughs> see what I'm doing? You do this more later, um, just helps to do it a little bit now. You can also use your fingers. Next is the fun part. I'm going to do the front bit, the big boofy bit in the front. So back in the day, and long before the day to which I'm referring, women have used padding and things to boof up their hair. Just look at the massive hairstyles of the late 18th century, that is not all natural. <laughs> they used cushions and frames and padding and things. And what women in the Edwardian era did was they made their own padding sometimes, maybe out of a bit of pantyhose stuffed with their own hair into like a kind of sausage shape so they could achieve the, the pompadour. You can make something like that if you want. Doll hair is quite good, like canicle on fake hair. Well, a long, long time ago I had made a kind of thing of fake hair. I got like a bundle of black canicle on and I used to use it as a pad to kind of create this sort of quiff type thing. When I first started doing my hair the way I usually do it, I used to put like a bit of padding on top so I could just kind of swoop it over. It makes things so much easier. So what I'm going to use now, and these are really really useful and extremely cheap, is this thing. Actually I've got two of them here. They come in black, brown, blonde, whatever. It doesn't super matter. It's ideal if you can get one similar to your hair colour. They're these things, right? Donuts that you use for making buns. They're absolutely everywhere and they cost hardly anything. So basically I've just got two of these and I cut them in half and they fit the purpose extremely well. I am really hoping I have enough bobby pins. With everything having been closed for so long and it is the nature of bobby pins to become lost, you can buy hundreds of them and you never seem to have any. Like, I haven't been able to buy any more and I've got hardly any left so I really hope I've got enough to do this hair. So I'm going to take the first one of these and I'm going to put it right, right up right here so it's just can you see, like, just above my ear is where I usually put it, and then I clip that bad boy in. You want to have it kind of as close to the front as possible. You want to ideally use the long bobby pins if you can get them. Just like that. And the second one is going to go on the other side, like so, again, just above the ear. We can kind of get it to connect <laughs> with the other one. So those are there, and now we can take this out. And I'm going to divide this into three parts. You don't have to do this, I find it's just a wee bit easier to do it that way. <laughs> I'm going to just give it a wee bit of texture, this texture spray sort of sucks, but a wee bit of texture spray, a wee bit of texture powder won't hurt. This is just one of those like sea salt sprays. Optional step, we're going to take the trusty fine tooth comb and we're going to ever so slightly, just a tiny wee bit, just back comb this part. Just a wee bit, just for some extra volume. Nothing crazy. Yeah. Just like that a wee bit, yes. I want to have like a wee bit of a fringe, okay, like a wee bit of hair on my face. And as I recently randomly chopped it, kind of stupidly, it might look a bit awkward. <laughs> so I'll figure that out. So with this nice and flat, we're going to pull this over the padding and I'm going to push it forward ever so slightly and clip it just behind the padding. You following me here? <laughs> oh, my padding's falling down. No! Okay. Can you see? There we go. Pulling that over and clipping that piece in place behind the padding. Might need a couple, two or three clips for that part. I'll fix my little fringy bits <laughs> towards the end. All right, I'm gonna be using a wee bit of hairspray to keep it all up. Next section, just a wee bit off the front here for some bangs. Tiny bit of spray for some texture. Tiny, tiny amount of back combing. Do do do. Volume, voluminous but soft. And do the same thing. Doesn't have to be like perfectly covering. The pattern when you first pull it on, just basically make sure it's it's there, that it's in place. Once it's clipped in, you can kind of pull it down so it covers it better, like fill with it a wee bit. Putting that in there. I wish I had more clips, but I don't. I'm kind of just doing this by feel. It's very hard to see what I'm doing. And you can kind of pull it a little bit so that it covers the padding entirely. And and the same again with the last piece. Separating a wee bit so I can have some bangs. They're gonna be fun bangs too. I'm gonna curl them real curly like. I feel like this look is quite good for me and for those of us 
whose hair is just, it just wants to be a bit messy. Because, like, if you look at uh, photographs from the time, they're a little bit not too neat, just a wee bit. Fly away. And must be pulling that over and clipping it in behind the padding. As you can see there's still some padding poking out, so this is where we can pull these parts a wee bit so that they cover the padding entirely and you don't see it at all. Tickling my ears. <laughs> the next bit's a wee bit difficult. <laughs> How do I even describe this? Not the ponytail, but the the back bits of the pieces that we just pulled over. These these bits that will be hiding behind the padding. You want to locate those very very carefully. It doesn't super matter in which direction you go. You kind of roll them like that to like a big loop and put that right behind the padding clip that in place doesn't have to be perfect doesn't have to be neat and tidy might actually help just to tie this wee ponytail piece out of the way for a moment I'm running out of hair clips horrifyingly quickly, so I'm just going to get on to the next bit and if there's any like loose bits hanging around, if I have any clips left, I'll be very pleased. Now, for the ponytail. Basically going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to separate that, kind of roughly, into pieces about, sort of about this big. Maybe a wee bit more than that. Also, you can give this a wee bit of a back comb if you like, not necessary. Bit of texture spray, doesn't hurt. Also, if you can get your hands in any of this like texture powder, this like volume boosting powder, this shit is legendary. Like if you want big boofy hair, this is the answer. This is my favourite one, got to be powderful. Can't get it in New Zealand. Like I said, don't have to, I'm just gonna give this again a tinsy bit of a boof. And do the same thing as I did with the other pieces, so I'm just gonna start at the end, roll them. And my fingers, not like that, but better. Can you see what I'm doing? Like that? And then I'm gonna clip it around the bun. that out a wee bit more underneath the ponytail part, underneath the sort of pseudo bun. This is a very rough job, but I think it's okay. I'm gonna try and get the curly bits to stand up as much as possible. I'm gonna try and fix this now. <laughs> I want to leave a wee bit out over my forehead. Okay, I'm gonna try for so it stands just soft. Keeping these here, they aren't gonna stay like that. And now I'm gonna use a bit of hairspray. And with the hairspray, I'm gonna Spray it on and smooth. Smooth it back with a hand. Feel free to use a less crappy hairspray than this one. Now I'm not super good at this, but bear with me. Can you use a bit of hairspray or gel or even just water wetting the bangs? All the way from the roots. And before it dries, I'm going to curl it with my fingers very tightly. Like that. <laughs> I can't remember if it was better to do it like the curl to do the, the curl inwards or outwards, I don't remember. Like that. Clip that into place. And then the same on the other side. You can leave them like that if you think that looks cute. Gives it a slight Georgian flair. These little like tubular bits. That is not what I'm doing though, but <laughs> it's a look. A bit of water just to make it extra moist. Doing this takes a little bit of practice. I kind of keep my finger through it and then slide the pin over my finger so that it grabs the whole lot. The more curls you can add to this hairstyle, the better. Soft, feminine curl. I've got this like random bit of hair hanging down, so I might give that a wee bit of a curl too. Ooh, I just spilled water down my front. Oh, there we go. A little bit of a spring. Dry faster. Ah, little spring. What I should have done really is made the little bun at the back high. I think if I've done anything particularly wrong. Sometimes when I take these out they look very stupid and sometimes they look perfect and lovely so let's see. <laughs> okay. Whoop. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, that one failed. It's supposed to be really like a spring. Fuck, I didn't leave that for long enough. I'm just gonna redo that one. And I have to replace the battery because it's about to die, so back in a sec. Okay, that's better. Oh, it still feels a bit wet. Ugh, what the fuck's happening here? The curly bangs just, ain't ha just aren't happening, okay? I usually like to have it in like a really tight spiral. It just doesn't want to, so fuck it. Generally this is a quite off the face style. I like to have a bit of hair around my face. How's that? Better? Worse? Doesn't really matter. This hairspray is really shiny actually. I think maybe like one with a more of a matte finish would be a little bit better because this is like very shiny. Obviously that's not the best job I've ever done but you get the idea at least don't you. It's something different to try. It's something super super out of fashion. This look went out about 110 years ago but I think it's ready for a comeback. <laughs> uh, obviously it would look a lot more authentic with proper makeup and a proper outfit on. It always gets a lot of compliments just because you don't see it anymore. I feel like I look like my own great-grandmother. I know that nowadays shiny hair is very desirable uh, because for some reason we think that shiny hair equals healthy hair. I believe that in the past that was never a thing. So if you want a more authentic look don't go for a shiny hairspray. I've been using this hairspray. I guess it's a lacquer so that's probably why it's shiny. I think it's a fun thing to do. It's a wee bit inspired by history and you can get really creative with it too. I mean this is pretty plain but if you look at a lot of old photographs you can see that there's all different sort of shapes and things that people did with their pompadour. For me it's something I like to do when I go visit family so like I did my hair kind of like this on Christmas day for example because it's still kind of an unusual hairstyle but it's not as wild and strange as my usual hair. Thank you very much for joining me here in this tiny wee cramped bathroom. Hope you've had a nice time. I'm just going to awkwardly perch my butt on the basin here and say if you have not already done so please subscribe to my channel and as always take care of yourselves, be nice to each other and I will see you next time. Bye.